listening to the discussion. Zoom in on DOE's innovation and scalability plans, sponsored by Zoom on Federal News Network. I'm your host, Jason Miller. My guests there are Ann Duncan, the Chief Information Officer at the Department of Energy, and Lou Giglio, the Head of Federal at Zoom. And Lou, thanks so much for taking the time to join me. Appreciate the time. Let me set just a little bit of context for our discussion today. A recent commentary by a former federal executive, we won't name the person, said innovation in the federal government and specifically in the financial sector is not possible. The thought from this person is that there's just too much resistance, too much risk aversion, and a lack of skill sets among federal workforce. But that one person's opinion does not hold true across all sectors of the federal government and among many, many different people. In fact, the Partnership for Public Service created a federal innovation council that includes toolkits and released a host of reports that, what, that shows what makes innovation successful in agencies. The partnership came up with 10 organizational characteristics to foster innovation, including the usual, like leadership support, empowering creativity among employees, creating a culture change, and the use of broad-based ideas that we all think can already do well. In fact, uh, the recent 2020 Best Places to Work in the Federal Government data shows 67% of public servants feel encouraged to come up with new and better ways of doing their jobs. That's a, a pretty nice number, but still seven points lower than their private sector employees. So what does it take to make innovation happen? Where can agencies uh, transform their processes and citizen services? Well, that's where our guests come in. So Anne, innovation is, is one of those topics that we love to talk about, but it's hard to maybe put a finger on. So you, however, are, have come up with or are developing something called a modernization playbook that is in fact focused on innovation and scalability. Let's discuss what that is and how it works. That's, yes, Jason, so, so thanks for, being, for inviting me to be here and talk about this. We're really excited about it. We're getting ready to release uh, the modernization playbook, and it's specifically about scaling modernization. Uh, because you know, we saw, as you go back to you know, 2013, I don't have to rehash for you the history of how we got here, right? Had a, had a bad experience uh, delivering a product, and, and everyone said, hey, we need to do better. And so we started developing um, some innovative techniques for delivering technology that we hadn't been using in the federal government. Things like uh, using Agile and DevOps and, and low, starting to use low-code platforms. Um, but what you saw was little pockets. Here and there, across the government, pockets of people doing amazing innovative things. And so um, the point of the playbook is to help us uh, figure out how to drive from pockets of innovation to innovation at scale. And um, you know, we're, we're, we've put together some fundamental requirements, so things you have to do to even get started, and then a number of plays that, uh, that, that teams can complete that will help them move down that path of scaling innovation. So really excited about uh, using this at DOE and uh, having folks across the government and maybe even the private sector use it. Um, and it's just gonna be uh, really exciting once it's out. So you know me, I heard about to be released. You know my next question, of course. How, how about? How about? The ubiquitous soon, or do we get it you know, next week and next month, next year? Yeah, actually, uh, we're going to launch it officially at our uh, DOE Cyber and Innovation Conference in Portland, Oregon, uh, the week of June 13th. Uh, I think that's the right week. All right. Um, and so, uh, you know, you're welcome to join us and, and, and catch the, the launch live. That's exciting. Thank you for that. Uh, let me bring Lou in from Zoom. When we talk innovation in government, and, and there's, I think, a, 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 as I said, sometimes folks in government say, well, I don't know if we can do it. It's hard. What do you see when you talk to your clients, when, when you talk to the, the federal, the, the public sector, about how, how are they looking to innovate and change the way they do work? Yeah, I don't think there's there's any issue with the innovation. Obviously, there are some brilliant folks that work within, within the Fed, right? I mean, um, you know, some of the things that, that have been born, right, technologies that have been born out of uh, the federal government and DOD uh, are, have changed the world, right? I mean, think about DARPA and that. I mean, innovation is, is kind of at the very core of what, uh, you know, what the Fed's doing. I think, you know, the trouble or the conflict comes in into supply chain, right? So when, when a great idea is born, um, sometimes it takes 12, 18, 24 months to, to get that procured, right, to, to figure out what that mechanism looks like. Um, you know, for us, you know, for you know, Zoom for Gov, uh, I think you know the way that I would answer that would be the the collaboration that's required in order to innovate. And a lot of times, that's not just agency collaboration, right? It's intra-agency. It's going to industry. Uh, it's going to nonprofits. It's going to other folks that um, may not sit within that uh, you know that that specific domain within that agency. So uh, that's that's kind of my take on it. 
<clears throat> and, and that's one of the things you've said about this playbook and, and your, your push for innovation. It's not just for DOE. This is not a DOE playbook. I mean, maybe it is technically, but, but your hope is really to, to broaden it out and, and share it and get others. I mean, how do you plan to do that? Or even though I know it's not out yet, but, but which, so you've been talking about it for a couple months now. Yeah, um, so a couple things. One is, first of all, the collaboration that went into this. Right, this, this The idea of the playbook started um, back when uh, I was uh, in the private sector and apparently not able to uh, just relax. Uh, so uh, I worked on a day one project, and uh, this is the idea that, you know, you know, Greg Godbout, who was my CTO at EPA, he and I put together this idea. So it started from an idea that, that was um, a public-private uh, partnership almost, and then um, it, uh, it, it has come into DOE as a project where we have talked to people across the federal and private sector enterprise. So it's not just let's talk to DOE folks about how to do this. It's let's talk to leading minds in the federal government and in industry and in nonprofits about how they think we should be doing this. So that's number one. We got lots of input from lots of people. Um, number two is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be the chair of the Innovation Committee and the CIO Council. So I'm able to use my role in that and on the Executive Committee of the Innovation Council to, to ensure that the council is engaged and, and um, uh, hopefully will be supportive of this effort. But if not, it's at least a platform we have to, to share this out with folks. And then finally, you know, we're going to publish it on the DOE website, make it available um, to folks in the public and private sector. So this is not going to be something that we put on a shelf in DOE, um, but it's going to be something we share out with everybody. Yeah, let me throw another bullet in there, Jason. I mean, you know, I think, you know, from a leadership standpoint, having folks that have spent time not only in, in Gov, but, you know, also, you know, at, at the county level, decade plus in industry, right? So bringing folks uh, and putting them in, in leadership positions that have been around, right, have, have you know, served in, in multiple capacities, whether it be leadership, innovation, you know, technologist, um, you know, having, having people like that in, in agency level leadership positions is critical to the innovation piece. Absolutely. Bring, I think the key is people going back and forth between public and private sector benefits both, right? Absolutely. Everybody understands each other better and can bring the best practices from both. Yeah, you got that perspective, right? I mean, you know what the DevOps cycles look like at a technology company, but you also are a, you know, a large consumer of, of, uh, of that type of stuff. So, yeah, yeah, that's a great point. When we talk about this, this collaboration piece, and, and, and Lou, maybe jump in here a little bit to talk about how do you ensure you get the right people together? How do you ensure that they can communicate and it's not just, oh, another meeting? Do you, have you seen uh, examples, whether from just internally at Zoom, for instance, or maybe more broadly across some of your clients? Yeah, I mean, it's got to work, right? So, I mean, one of the things that we go back to, simple, secure, and scalable, right? Being able to, uh, you know, to allow people to work on a, uh, their preferred time, their preferred platform, uh, to be consumed the way that they want to be consumed from, a, from an interaction standpoint. Right, so you know we are. That's where we are focused 100%. Um, you know, we just had a, a, a survey done where 86% of, of, of government workers preferred uh, a tool like Zoom or Zoom specifically uh, because you know they've they've got a very specific control uh, or set of controls over how they're consumed and perceived. Right, so uh, I think you know from a from a collaboration standpoint, uh, it's always easier when your guard is let down, when you're able to to talk freely, uh, when you're not waiting for something to load. Um, you know, so all, all the above, right? <clears throat> and, and from your perspective, turning this inside energy department, the playbook is not day one, we're going to innovate. You've been there, I guess, just over a year, year and a half maybe now, and it's not like you're not innovating every day. So how do you bring the right people together throughout energy department and even across the government to work on a specific problem or a, a set of problems? Yeah, so a year a couple weeks ago, so you're right on the money. There you go. Um, so the way that we uh, try and bring people together is is really to create coalitions of the willing. You know, we have as the office of CIO, we we run the governance structure across DOE. We we are the conveners across uh, information technology and operational technology, um, and so we take those opportunities when we have a project we want to take on to to go out through our governance processes, through the regular meetings we have, identify folks who are interested in engaging. And you know, some, an example of this um, was the 5G catalog we built, which allowed us to go out to the enterprise to understand um, what everyone is doing and uh, to pull that together and share that out across the enterprise again, both in DOE and other elsewhere in the federal government, and then identify the gaps. And then we can bring people together to work on the gaps. So out of the office CIO, you know, we're looking for the 20 
or budget probably. I love the length of federal budget cycles. Um, to, to fill some of those gaps and to build some strategic projects to do that. And then we will pull people that we worked with to develop the catalog back in to help us fill those gaps. So you know, a huge part of my job, as you can imagine, at DOE is building relationships and talking to people, which is why I seem like I'm never home. It's because I'm out talking to people, <laughs> whether virtually or in person. <clears throat> and we know that that ability to talk to people has changed. It used to be, we're going to do a meeting at 1 o'clock. Everyone shows up at the office. Okay, we got to chat for 20 minutes, and then we get to the meeting. And then uh, my uh, uh, daughter said to me once, um, why do we schedule meetings for a half hour that take 45 minutes? And I said, that is just life. Right. So she, <laughs> she learned that the, uh, uh, I'll call, use the quotes here, hard way. But, but, I mean, have you seen meetings differently? Are they, and, and again, it's not all about meetings, but, but the collaboration has changed. And, and I hate the pandemic discussion, but I'll bring this up. This taught us a new way to really collaborate. So maybe Lou, jump in then and fill in the, the back. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something, you know, so first of all, yes, we've seen more meetings, right? So, uh, you know, it's not like you've got commute time built into meeting schedules anymore. I mean, from a calendaring perspective, I'm sure you are back to back to back to back to back, right? So probably eight hours a day in meetings, and, and that's because you are available. And, you know, there's, there's good and there's bad in that, right? So um, I, I think the productivity has definitely increased. I know mine has because of the uh, because of my availability and presence, right? So they know where you are. And it's created, I'm going to just jump in, it's created that, that area for discussions that maybe wouldn't happen because you're not... Everyone loves the water cooler side mm -hmm. of it, but there's the other side of it too. And, and, and maybe jump in as well on this side because we're just about to hit, hit a break. But wh what are you seeing from just your internal experience? Yeah, I think that uh, both methods are necessary, right? So, so being 100% in the office isn't re is not required. We can work virtually and we can be more effective when working virtually. But the face-to-face -face collaborations are also hugely important for relationship building. Absolutely. Let's take a quick break and come back. We can dig into that a little bit more. You're listening to the discussion, Zoom in on DOE's innovation and scalability plans, sponsored by Zoom on Federal News Network. 